I'm really excited that you're here. How many of you have wanted to start a piece of art but couldn't think of the colors that you needed or exactly how am I going to render this image with these colors, et cetera, et cetera. Where do you get your inspiration? Well, last summer I started, I'm a, I'm a big gardener. I love gardening, growing my own food. And last summer I started uh, pulling inspiration, color inspiration from my garden and also from the seed catalogs where I would buy my seed packets. I did a few little, quick little Instagram things with uh, uh, choosing color palettes from seed catalog photos and then creating a piece after it. What I thought I would do here is a series of videos showing you the process more in depth. And you don't have to just use seed, seed catalogs, you can use anything, photographs, what you see in front of you, um, one of your favorite outfits, whatever it is. to inspire color choices but I'm going to use seed catalogs this will be the very first one that we do seed catalog this is from Baker Creek heirloom seeds I am not sponsored by them I'm not an affiliate I just love their seeds and their catalog has beautiful photographs in it like these so let's get ourselves together and get started all right Okay, so here we are back at the work table. Here's my seed catalog. Isn't that a gorgeous photo on the front? At some point, I'm gonna do a color palette inspired by this photo, because it is stunning. Anyhow, I chose four different, in order to slow this, uh, excuse me, to speed this up a little bit uh, for you guys on your end, I went ahead and I chose four photos that I found inspiring. And I'm gonna show you what they are and I'm going to decide right here, right in front of you, which one to choose. So this is the first one. I'm always drawn to purples. So I've got this beautiful, almost sort of an ultraviolet purple, this absolutely stunning plum magenta color, and then some shades of yellow and orange. Little, little hints of green back there. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one, is here. Now green is not my favorite color to paint with. However, it is part of nature and I have to get used to it. So here's an option. Beautiful shades of green. We've got a beautiful dark, dark green bordering on blue with this minty, sagey green, a much brighter lime in here. And then we've got these pretty shades of peach, sort of creamsicle. Here's this beautiful greenish aqua leaning sort of color. And then we have a stunning dark steel blue. That was picture number two. Here's picture number three. This one here, isn't that amazing? So this is the peppers and the plant together. We've got the leaves that contain shades of a really beautiful, almost royal purple white and shades of green. And then the peppers themselves, we have, again, that beautiful purple of vermilion, which is a red that borders on orange, and then shades of green in there, okay? Oh, little twinges of yellow here and there. I love that one. And then the last one is this photo of this beautiful little girl here holding, what are these, snapdragons. Isn't that stunning? All the colors in the flowers, shades of red, pink, burgundy, like a deep wine. There's magenta, beautiful shade of yellow there, some light green in the foliage and in the stems. And then I could even go so far as to add the mint of the little girl's dress, maybe some of this tan of the skin and the sand, okay? But I have three photos of vegetables and I have one photo of flowers. So I think I'm going to save this one for a later date and now choose from the flowers. So we have, excuse me, not the flowers, but rather the vegetables. We have the peppers, we have the cantaloupe, which I realized I called a vegetable, but it's really a fruit. And we have the carrots. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go with the carrots. This one I find the most exciting. I love this beautiful purple against that orange. It's very, very complimentary when you think about it in terms of the color wheel. So 
I'm good. This will be our photo uh, inspiration, and we're going to move from there. So now that we're at the work table, we've chosen our photo. I'm going to give you a quick little tour of the materials that I'm going to use, and then we're going to get started. All right. Okay, so here we are. Here's the photo, remember. We're not gonna worry about that one. This is our photo reference. These are Carandash Neocolor 2 Aquarelle crayons. They are water-based crayons, okay? Uh, also very high quality. They're very, very nice. They have a ton of pigment in them. This is vine charcoal. So it's charcoal that is in these long, actually has this, yes, it has been opened in these long pieces. It's very light charcoal. I love charcoal. It's such an interesting and lovely medium. So there's charcoal. Of course, it's black. If I put it back in the box, I'm going to break it. So I'm not going to. These are acrylic inks. Okay. And in this little pouch here, my little panda wearing sunglasses pouch, I've got various different markers. So, oh, and a glue stick. Uh, some are oil-based, like this one. Some are acrylic, like this one, okay? And I will choose some of those. And I will also choose paints, but I'm gonna wait on the paints until I've chosen the other things. So here we go. First thing I'm gonna do, I know that I wanna use a little bit of charcoal, okay? Or at least have it available. So I'm going to choose charcoal as one of my darkest darks, right? You can see that in here. So charcoal is a definite. Now I'm gonna close up this box, just squeeze it back in there. Okay, so we've chosen the charcoal. I am going to also choose some acrylic ink. Okay, so here's a good one. This one is a gorgeous color, quinacridone magenta. One of my absolute favorite colors. And if you look, look how beautifully that matches. So I definitely want that quinacridone magenta. Let's take a look. Can we use any of this fluorescent pink? It's a different brand, uh, no big deal. It's still acrylic ink. Uh, let's see, do we think we can use it? Actually, you know what? I bet we can as a highlight here, you'll notice around some of these bright spots, there's a little bit of very, very bright fluorescent. So I think we'll go ahead and use that. Now we need to decide, okay, are we gonna use, what shade of yellow? are we gonna use? I have three with acrylic ink. I have yellow oxide, otherwise known as yellow ochre. I have yellow medium azo, and I have cadmium yellow light, okay? So I don't want this one. I feel like that is just not the right not the right color there. We've got some orange. It almost looks like it goes with the orange, but honestly, we need that to be a little bit more brilliant, okay? So now we are down to cadmium or yellow azo. It is a toss up to be honest. For my eye, I feel like the yellow on the interior of these carrots here is just slightly cool. I'm gonna use this. It looks just a tiny bit cooler than that one. So that's the yellow that I'm gonna use, okay? Now, these shades here can mix in various different ratios to create an orange, all right? So I'm good there. Now, I'm gonna need something that is gonna help me achieve this level of purple that, um, that starts to lean toward blue, right? So I have, I have phthalo blue. I have oh, Prussian blue, okay? Phthalo blue is slightly greener. Prussian blue, slightly more violet. They are so close though. I also have deep violet. Now let's just check for something else that might help. No? Nope. All right. So will this violet work? This violet actually matches some of the stems here. So I'm going to choose that. And then I want to ch uh, choose a blue to mix in 
to create this ultraviolet. And I think I'm gonna use this Prussian blue, okay? So those are my acrylic inks that I'm gonna use, all right? And we will do a recap on those shortly. All right, Karandash. These are water-based artist crayons. They are really, really beautiful, nice crayons. So again, this is my reference. I'm gonna start with some oranges. Let's see, some orangey yellows. What do I have here? Any of these? All right, let's see. Which ones of these look like they go? Perhaps that one. Mm. No. Perhaps this. And those don't go. So we will leave those as is. All right. Now let's look at the purples. We have these purples. All right, these are our purples. What do we think looks like it can go? That I think isn't quite bright enough. This, however, is lovely. This, look at that. Some of the highlights right here in the stems are that color. And this color. This periwinkle is probably no good with this group. And I think, is this the same as one of these other ones? No, it isn't. Let's look. That one also. So I've got those shades of purple and magenta. This one for sure. See that? That one for sure. Do I have any other deep pinks? Nope, I don't. That's it. So that's how we'll do it. I don't think we can use light pink. That's not going to work. All right. Now we have our markers. Let's see, does this Posca pen, beautiful shade of blue, work? Nope. Does this pink one? Too pink. All right, what about this black? The black will probably work, and I do like to use the black for highlights sometimes. And here's a white, maybe. Got silver, I don't wanna use metallics in this piece. We have glitter, I think that's a little too cheesy. All right, that's what we've got. The only thing left for us to do is pick the paint. Now, the only thing left for us to do is choose the paint colors. So, let's see, I need I should use my photo as a reference, and here it is. Photo as a reference. What do we have here? I need probably magenta, definitely magenta. Uh, let's see, cad yellow? Maybe for mixing, maybe for mixing. So I'll grab those. What else? Dioxazine purple, definitely. That is gonna get us close to that background. What else? I'm gonna grab some black and I'm gonna grab some white. And then we have it. That's gonna be our palette. Now, let's just see what it looks like all together. So thank you so much for being here. Before the final reveal of the palette and how it works with the photo, I just wanted to remind you, if you enjoyed what you watched, like and subscribe. That'll be wonderfully greatly appreciated. Again, thank you for being here and now the reveal. So here we have it. These are our supplies. We have the paints, okay? Uh, I tend to use Liquitex. It's a good brand, but not as expensive as Golden which is a better brand, but again, not as expensive. Save money where you can. Uh, most of it is basics because I like to apply thin uh, transparent layers, which is more easily done with their basic line. Heavy body acrylic paints are have a beautiful, beautiful body, beautiful texture. Uh, they sort of mimic 
oil paint in their texture. It's not exact, but it's similar. Two Posca pens, white and black. I've got some Caran d'Ache Artist Water-Based Artist Crayons, Vine Charcoal, and Acrylic Inks. Cadmium Yellow Light, Fluorescent Pink, Prussian Blue, Quinacridone Magenta, and Deep Violet. And all of these colors are going to help me achieve a piece that uses the colors that are inspired by this photo. Now, you'll notice that I didn't pick any of the green out. There's a tiny, teeny bit of green, and as I'm painting the final piece, if I feel like I can put the green in there successfully, I'll add it, but since it's so minuscule here, I didn't feel it was important to include. We will wait for that to happen when the time comes.